Hey, good afternoon, Santa Cruz. You're listening to the event Santa Cruz radio show on KSQD Santa Cruz 90.7, your favorite Santa Cruz radio station. Okay, I don't know how we are going to do this today, but we have way too many guests in one hour. This is like a super packed show. I have David Dennis with me. Hey, David, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. So David is with Ventana Surfboards and Supplies. He is my co-host. He's the one that's making this happen. This is like the Event Santa Cruz, you know, Ventana edition, right? Yeah. So all, all of your friends, all of your collaborators in one studio. It's kind of like the greatest hits of local cool people. <laughs> that is. Except okay. us. Except just you and me. Yeah, we, we should be excluded. No, David is the coolest. So, David, what is like the the plan for today? Like, how are, wh- what are we going to do in this hour? I thought you were going to tell me. <laughs> we, I know We've me. been working on this for a while. We have so many different companies and people that we collaborate with locally. Uh, you know, we do Reclaim Wooden Surfboards built by my partner who's... Are you are you uh, able to talk? Yeah, yeah. Martine's oh, ready. Yeah, Martine's oh. here. Martine step out. Uh, and we do you know eco friendly apparel and surf supplies, but we've also collaborated with a bunch of really cool local businesses and actually others across the U.S. as well. And so we're going to have them on and talk about some of the cool things they're involved in. We want to shine the light on some of our cool partners. Cool. So before we get, I want to find out more about you. Like, how did this partnership of of you two of the Martine David partnership? How did this happen? So Martine's been building these incredible reclaimed wooden surfboards for, what is it, like 10 years now? Coming on about 10 years, yeah. Yeah, about 10 years. Uh, I did a photo exhibit that I uh, put on to raise money for the Surfrider Foundation Santa Cruz chapter about five and a half, maybe six years ago, and had this idea for an eco-friendly surf company, and Martine was building these great boards, and he was actually one of the people I photographed. Cool. So we decided to join forces and uh, create Ventana Surfboards and Supplies. Cool, awesome. So let's get right into it, because... Like I said, this is going to be a packed hour. We also have music guests today, don't we? Yeah, Carolyn Sills. Okay. Oh, yeah. I see her outside. Yeah, there she is. She's and she brought a special guest who she'll introduce as Charlie, well. Charlie, I think. She's amazing. Yeah. yeah, cool. So that's going to be a, around 325 or so. So look forward to that. Um, so let's see if we can get them on the... We have our first guest. And David's going to be doing the bulk of the questions because he knows all the gossip about all of these people. They're your close friends. We need some controversy here. So um, Paul Jasper? right yes yeah, paul on okay let's see if we can get paul hey louis how do we get paul on there hey paul you there can you guys yeah can you hear me we can hear you the hey, magic paul. of radio wow, that's incredible <laughs> cool. well, i'm first does that mean i have the most gossip is that why you put me first <laughs> hey if you've got gossip on us or martine or, or something we'd love to hear it i don't know <laughs> no, may powers off power <laughs> yeah so paul's awesome paul's copper pig fine woodworking um also known as latex caterpillar and he is back in Framingham, Massachusetts. We met him on Instagram, and we've been doing these really cool collaboration projects. Not Tinder, but Instagram. Not on Tinder. Okay. No, not on, I mean, I would definitely swipe right. <laughs> is it right or left? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, you have to think, yeah, if you have to think about the direction, you're too old for Tinder. I know. Oh, I'm, I'm married sad. like 22 years or I something, know. so I don't know anything about it. Uh, yeah, so Paul is this incredible woodworker and, and uh, biologist and amazing dude, and and we've been doing some really cool projects together. So I'd love him. Paul, tell us a little bit more about what you're up to and what you do back um, thousands and thousands of miles away in Massachusetts. Excellent. So uh, as Dave said, we met on Instagram and um, I'm a woodworker. I've been trained for the last you know, 12 to 14 years doing furniture, but more recently I decided uh, I wanted to try my own handed design, original design, which sort of led me to start collaborating and branching out to other people uh, in the Instagram community, and I met um, Martine and Dave, and we started collaborating on sort of unique design together. So their surfboards are totally, you know, unique. And I was doing the same sort of thing, but on home decor items like tea boxes and sushi boards. And some of the elements that I was designing for my own uh, work, it turns out, could be used and inspired into some of the surfboards. And then some of the things Martine was doing, uh, vice versa, were influencing how I was designing my things. And so we just started collaborating. I would make a few items, send it to him. They would integrate it into a surfboard. And then Martine would one-up me on the next project. And I'd say, oh, yeah, I got to, you know, <laughs> damn it, Martine. <laughs> and I had to, like, you know, sort of try and one-up him back. And it was just sort of this really productive collaboration back and forth. Yeah, and then we pulled upcycled skate art into it, and you've done some collaborations with with Alex over there, and 
it's been really neat. I mean, what, the key for us is having you move out here. I know you came to visit us and stayed with us. And <laughs> yeah, how, the, how do we get the that Capitola to happen? Art and Wine Festival with it. Yeah, I mean, we'd, we'd love it. I mean, because you, you're also a biologist as well, right? I am. I'm, I, I'm a full-time, I still am a full-time scientist. I'm a biologist for a living, which, which really is awesome. You say, because people ask me, don't you want to do woodworking full-time? And the answer is no, because by only doing it basically half-time, and, and having the science as a day job, I'm I'm afforded the luxury of making what I want to make, as opposed to what I have to make. And your science, so I, your science, balance, sorry, Paul, your science is kind of inspiring your woodworking, right? I know you were doing some some DNA swirl designs and things like that, right? This this is true. I, I have inlaid brass DNA on some of my designs, and also I take a, a scientific approach to the things I make. For instance, I have a lot of interest in understanding how to use science to change the way we treat wood you know can we bleach wood a little differently can we get new colors can we dye it in different ways so some of that science background does influence what i do and how i work oh that's that's interesting yeah i mean some of the stuff that i love that we've done together is you know martine creates these these mini wooden reclaimed wooden fish scales i think the board he's got right now that he's working on for a customer has almost 768 fish scales in it or something and then you took the scales and made a sushi board that matched our hundredth board, and that was just a really beautiful combination. That that cross country collab that we did. Yeah, that was great. And you know what, what's interesting is Martine designed them as fish scales, and my I was talking with my daughter in the shop, and she helps me sometimes, and she arrayed the fish scales in a in a, a circle, and suddenly it looked like the petals of a flower. Right. And so then we started using the fish scales what were originally meant to be fish scales into different floral designs and that then fed back to Martine. The next thing I know Martine made a an awesome hand plane using the fish scales as the flower petals. Just an example of how the collaboration sort of works both ways. Yeah, it's been great. So when are you moving out here? Yeah, that's what I want to know. I know your wife wants to. Oh, no, no, easy, easy. When you help buy me a house. <laughs> that's that's, that's easy out here, isn't it? I'll convert my garage. <laughs> <laughs> well, you made an office. That's Just give him a little, that's like, true. shed. That's yeah. Right. Well, I just bought a camper. I can have him live in oh, my driveway. that's true. I saw I that. that. Oh, I saw that. Yeah, it's going to be amazing. Fun. Yeah, happy to have you live in my driveway. <laughs> okay, All cool. Right, I'll see you next week. So, right, Paul, cool. wait, Paul, before you leave, so if somebody wants to find out more information about your work, like where do they go online? Yeah, so copperpigwoodworking.com, that's my website, or you can find me on Instagram at copperpigfinewoodworking with underscores in between. But basically put in copperpig and you'll find me. Awesome, yeah. cool. Thank you very much, Paul. All right, buddy, thanks a lot. Hey, guys, that, thanks, thanks Paul. so much. Okay, cool, great start. Now let's move over to who's next, David. I think we we have Tyler Hopkins. It's right? Tyler, yeah. How's hey it going, boys. Tyler? How's All it right. going? Locust Surfboard. So Tyler is creating eco board certified boards, uh, kind of like Ventana. We do wood. He does more traditional boards. These incredible kind of revolutionary shapes, and he works out of our workshop over in Aptos. And we've had an amazing collaboration with him too. But he's doing some really really cool stuff locally. What, can, what do you can got I ask going a question on? real fast? Yeah, I'm sorry, sure. Tyler. Yeah. What's up with this like compound that you guys have down there in Aptos? toss <laughs> you know we work in a really really magical place uh the aptos warehouse complex is just just since we've been there um just more and more just amazing artists just keep moving in yeah now you guys so started the entire something. complex is you know basically artists and lots of people that are working on reclaimed materials and sustainably based businesses yeah i mean ashley yes. lloyd surfboards is there jeremiah Killy. Uh, Alex. Alex Wong at yeah. Upcycled Skate Art, Alibi Interiors. It's just this amazing <laughs> local uh, collab fest that's happening with artists over there. But tell us more about yeah. the kind of boards you're building. I know you've got some shapes that are really unique. Um, right now I've got uh, you know a few really cool designs that I'm working on. The main thing that I focus on is really small, short planing holes. Uh, that's kind of where my obsession has been over the past few years. Wait, what's a planing hole? A planing hole is... Um, it's a traditional surfboard design okay. uh, where the you can go with a much uh, smaller board and still be able to add mm. enough volume into the board to float you. Uh, to give you an idea, somebody that's my size, I'm 5'10", 185 pounds. If I was riding a contemporary shortboard, my go-to would be probably around a 6'2". And you know, pre, you know, I have a shakedown model that I ride at 5'2". Okay. all the way down at 27 liters versus if I was on the 6.2, I'd be somewhere in the 32 liters. Um, so that's kind of been the rabbit hole I've been going down for a while. 
and uh, experimenting with bottom contours, sus- more sustainable materials, all of the foam that we use. I hand shape every single board and all of the foam is recyclable EPS. We source it from Marco Foams, which is also in California. And then um, I gloss all the boards with bio-based epoxies, a company called Entropy Resins that I've been working with for the past five years. Yeah, that's great. And I also know a lot of your models are named after primates, right? Sure. I Why do, is that? I yeah. do series uh, when I'm working on a new group of boards. I like to create series because then it gives me a focus of where I'm going to you know, take my designs to. So the first series I did was the primate series. And so they all have names. You know, there's Monkey Wing, the Gibbon, um, the Grivet the OTAN, there's just a bunch of different monkey name uh, boards out there. And all of those were, I named them primates because I was pulling from a lot of traditional design and then putting more performance characteristics into those designs. And, but I'd heard it had something to do with whenever we look at each, ourselves in photos that we look like monkeys because we were always <laughs> bent over with our arms out. That, I know I do. That's actually where my logo design came that's from. Cool. Oh my goodness, yeah. I never thought of that. It's so true. Know, Any I, surfer picture, it looks like a I, I know, I think I'm ripping and then someone takes a picture and I'm like hunched over. Oh, like, it's, always so. the, it's always the case. So the idea behind my logo, if you haven't seen it yet, it's a flying monkey straight, okay. straight out of the Wizard of Oz. Uh, first and foremost, the live action version of the Wizard of Oz, those flying monkeys scared me to death. Oh, totally. they're yeah. super creepy. They're just they still super me. ominous, right? So it's kind of this cool like symbol in that in that regard. But also looking at people that have been riding shortboards in every condition, whether it's the right condition for the board or not, you end up doing the Huntington hop, hmm. uh, where you're kind of bouncing up on the on the board trying to generate speed. And if you look, most of the time your hands end up kind of dragging pretty low. Yeah. We end up looking like monkeys. So the first board that I did was called the monkey wing because I was going to give all the monkeys wings. <laughs> I think my, my son has a monkey wing, right? Isn't that the model that yeah. he has? He loves it. And yeah. I have a bonobo. My daughter has a bonobo long board. And, yeah. and then uh, the two boards, the long boards that I have, my daughter have are collaboration boards with Ventana. So tell us about that. Absolutely. So as soon as we started working together, sharing a factory, uh, obviously sharing a space with Martine has been awesome. We've been able to bounce all sorts of design ideas back and forth materials, unique ways of using those in traditional surfboard design and incorporating some of his wood in the process. And the first several that we did, we did um, just the stringer of the surfboard glued up with unique historic reclaimed woods that Ventana provided. And we would just have the the blanks show up already cut in half and we would do the glue up of the stringer directly into the board. And then I would hand shape the board and finish all the glass work and then that was the first round of collaborations. That yeah, I, I think a lot of those stringers are from guitar offcuts from the Santa Cruz Guitar Company. And Carolyn Sills is here playing music, and she's also the general manager of the guitar company. Absolutely, which is one of our biggest upcycle partners. Yep. Uh, I know one of the, at least the tail block on the the board that my daughter loves so much is from the uh, wood from the Western Flyer, the boat that John Steinbeck and Doc Rickett sailed into the Sea of Cortez in 1940. So I'm cool. actually holding a piece in my hand right now. So it's been great for us to all be able to work together with our partnerships. Absolutely. I agree completely. And there's other people in the complex that I've started to collaborate with as well. I've got upcycled skate art that we're working on a really cool project that's going to be unveiled at the um, Capitol Art and Wine Festival in September. Some yeah, new cool it. stuff with upcycled skate wood uh, laid into the board. Awesome. So really excited about that. And uh, there's a few other people in the complex that I'm hoping to pull into some collaborations as well. Cool. And then you do you do the glassing for Ashley Lloyd. Is that right? Absolutely. Yeah. Ashley Lloyd does uh, eco boards as well. Yeah. And so I'm only a few doors down from her. And it's worked out really, really well for me to take on all of her uh, color work and lamination work. That's great you know it's just a couple doors down and keeping, yeah. keeps me busy and so if we want to find out more information about your boards if we want to actually get a surfing like dictionary to find out what you're talking about <laughs> stringers i don't know no um where where do we find out more about you so um you can find me at locustsurfboards.com okay also on instagram at at locust underscore surfboards go ahead give me a follow get on there and check out what we're doing okay guys so you're listening to KSQD 90.7 Santa Cruz, your, again, favorite Santa Cruz radio station. David, we're doing it. We're like, we're only one minute off. Are we actually on track? Um, let's see. We're, we're, we're not, no, we're two minutes off, actually. So let's go right into it. Let's get, I think we have Chris. Let me see if I can get him on. Um, Chris Chase, are you on the line? Nope. Let's see. Chris, are you on the line? 
I'm on the line, yeah. Awesome. Yay, okay. We got another one. <laughs> Technology, it's amazing. Okay, go ahead. I'm gonna. Li- so, go ahead, David. Go ahead. Let's let's talk to Chris here. Yeah. So, Chris is uh, another one of our partners, and I mentioned the wood from uh, the hull of John Steinbeck's Western Flyer boat. And Chris works with the Western Flyer Foundation, and the project that they have going on up in Washington right now is just mind blowing. So, I'm gonna let him talk about it, and then I'll ask him a couple of questions. If that's cool with you, Matthew. Yeah, go for it. Uh, start off. Hey, thanks for including the Western Flyer today. It's great to be uh, to be on with Montana. So, yeah, the Western Flyer. Um, it's an old 1937 fish boat, Monterey sardine container, made famous by Mr. John Steinbeck. Um, he took it with Ed Ricketts to the Sea of Cortez, and they co-authored a couple of landmark books on environmental awareness. So, it it is, as David said, it's an amazing project. It's uh, it's great to be involved with and be, be part of it. Tell us a little bit about how. John Gregg, who who bought the boat, came to have it. Yeah, great story. John read the book, The Log from the Sea of Cortez, as a young man. Kind of kept it in the back of his mind. It kind of shaped the way he looked at the world, uh, the interconnected of the world, the, the stories that Steinbeck and Ricketts wrote. And as he got older in life and the boat kind of came into his vision, uh, he had an opportunity to purchase it. Uh, not knowing exactly what he was going to do with it, but he knew he wanted to kind of create a nonprofit and give it back to kind of the community, Monterey, the great Monterey, the Sea Cortez. So um, yeah, he purchased the boat in 2015. That's when he and I met each other. And we kind of dove right into what a nonprofit is and how to get it started and how to restore a boat and all those good things. So, well, what are you going to do with the restored boat then? Yeah, so restoration is going on in Port Townsend, Washington right now. Uh, we're about halfway through. Hope to get the wa- hit the water by late 2020. Return to Monterey in 21, and ultimately we'll be doing educational and research off of the boat there. You know, it's a small platform, but if we can engage with a handful of young people at a time in the, in the waters, the coastal waters of California and down to the Sea of Cortez, we've kind of hit our goals. So education and research platform, kind of in that intersection of art and science that Steinbeck and Ricketts wrote so much about. That's great. How, and how did you get involved, and what are you doing specifically on the project? Yeah, so I've been a shipwright, a professional wooden shipwright for 30 years. Uh, I came into the project as the lead shipwright. Pretty quickly in, I fell in love with the project. I became good friends with John Gregg and the board, and I transitioned to the project director for the foundation. So now I'm overseeing the restoration from the the the, uh, the foundation side of the table, essentially, and uh, and kind of helping shape the, the next chapter past the restoration. What are we going to do with it? We're done. So a little more administrative, a little less hands-on. Great. Yeah, it's been cool to see the YouTube videos that the Western Flyer Foundation is putting out, the the clips. I think you're on your 11th one now of what's going on with the yeah. project and the history of the boat and the wood and the the rebuild. It's just it's just such an amazing piece of history. And the partnership that we've been able to have with you is just one of the most exciting things we've ever done. We got I think we have seven boards, Doug Fur from the Hall. Uh, that we've been able to use in, in our surfboards and our hand planes and some other projects. And do you still just, have some more of that wood still? We do. A, yeah. We've got a, we've got a few more boards and we're, we're able to use that. And tell us a little bit more, Chris, well, about I got, how I got a lot, I got a lot more for you. Yeah. I mean, we'll, <laughs> we'll it, take it. Can people come and visit the boat? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, the, the shipyard has been really gracious to have kind of a public viewing area. They get 10 to 20 people a day, believe it or not. I was down there most of the morning, and 15, 20 people walked in. You know, the YouTube channel has definitely brought the focus, but the boat, Ed Ricketts' legacy and the shadow he cast is, is enormous. It's brought people from all over the world, Europe, Australia. Um, yeah, so folks can come down and see the boat and, and, um, and take, take a look at it and see what's all going on. Great. So tell us a little bit more about how we can uh, connect with you on the web, Instagram. Yeah, you know, I think, you know, we hit it there, you know, the YouTube channel, we, you know, you can Google us on YouTube, either a bicycle or the Western Flyer Fishboat comes up, and you probably want to watch the Western Flyer Fishboat stuff. Uh, it's, I do a video every two or three weeks, just kind of update to the project. Um, obviously, we got the old Instagram stuff, you know, got the Stir Curiosity and Chase Boat Builder, and then we got a website, westernflyer.org. But probably the best plug I can give today is there's a great Smithsonian article in this month's issue about the boat. Well-crafted, well-written, and really gives a nice story about the why this restoration should happen. So um, it's uh, worth, worth reading. Great. Chris, thanks a ton for dialing in today. 
Hey, yeah, no problem. I mean, it's great to be working with Encana. They were an early supporter of us, and uh, we're happy to be supporting them. They do a great product, and uh, it's really wonderful. They reached out, and David and I, and supplied them with some wood, and we we'll hope that keeps going on. Great. Thanks great. a lot. Hey, thanks a lot, Chris. You have a great day. Hey, yeah, bye-bye. Okay, so we have our live music coming up soon, but let's hear a song. We, we need a little break so we can set up some microphones. So um, let's play a little Coffus Brothers. Coffus Brothers, you did something with them once, didn't you, David? Yeah, we did a beer release with the Humble Sea Brewing Company and the Coffus Brothers. It was called Ventana Spruce, and we had a big party downtown. The Coffus Brothers played the party. Awesome. Okay, let's play a little Coffus Brothers. Hey, Matthew Swinderton here with Event Santa Cruz Radio Show, and you're listening to KSQD 90.7 Santa Cruz. Okay, so David, we have something pretty special coming on right now, don't we? I'm pretty excited about this one. You know, that's what I I love about the show, and I, I know I'm sorry for interrupting, David, but every single week we get to have a live performer, and we get this like minute, like just a, a, like a miniature concert, like a private concert. And today's no different. Who do we have? Carolyn Sills and Charlie Joe Wallace. All right. Wow. Yeah. So Carolyn Sills is a really, really interesting. She's we, you played one of our parties, another beer release we yep. did with Humble Sea Brewing Company. And Carolyn also works over at Santa Cruz Guitar Company down the street. And we are they're an upcycle partner of ours at Ventana. So we get reclaimed wood offcuts from. Uh, their guitar production. My and business cards are, are made out of like that, recut. Yeah. That's right. We made uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, wax comb scraper business cards yep. out of I think uh, Santa Cruz Guitar Company mahogany Honduras mahogany off cuts. Yep. Tell us a little bit more about Santa Cruz Guitar Company. What makes it so special? Yeah, well, we've been around for almost forty three years now. Uh, started by Richard Hoover back in seventy six, and um, you know, as in addition to just being wanting to do responsibly harvested, sustainable yield wood, you know, working with companies like you guys. That way, we get to use you know the whole buffalo as we put it you know we get all this wood in but we only need so much you know to make our guitars and use uh, you know different offcuts and marquetry for appointments so it's nice that you guys get to do something amazing with it afterwards yeah we've been really excited about that tell who are some of the musicians that play santa cruz guitar company guitars uh well we love them I mean, we do have some famous folks we like to name drop of course <laughs> like brad paisley or clapton guys like that but you know also too a lot of uh, studio artists use our guitars um a lot of teachers a lot of you know worship musicians um and just you know players i think you know obviously they're they're more expensive, you know, real custom-made instruments, but it's the kind of thing that's an heirloom quality guitar that'll last you a lifetime. So. That's great. And what's your role over there? Um, I basically do, like, general management um, operations, so I kind of oversee, you know, what guitars we start and work with all the dealers and customer relations and everything like that. So. That's great. Well, we're excited to hear you play some music as Thank well. You. Where can people find more about Santa Cruz Guitar Company? Uh, you can go to santacruzguitar.com, and also for everyone local, we do do tours twice a week, uh, Thursday afternoons and Friday mornings, so if you ever want to give cool. a call, we can set you up and schedule a tour for you. You can see the shop and see how the guitars are made. Yeah, it's really cool over yeah. there. Yeah, see all the offcuts we'll be sending to Ventana. That's right. Yeah. What Let's did get you, some music going. Wait, Rufa, I have a quick question. What did you do just recently with Jesse Daniels? I think you were at the Americana. Is that what it's Oh, yeah. No. Uh, Maripolitan Awards. Maripolitan yeah, Awards. Yeah, it was started by Dale Watson. Um, so, yeah, I also front the Carolyn Sills Combo, which is my uh, yeah. like spaghetti western swing band here in town. And um, we won an award in 2018 for um, Western Swing Group, and then Jesse Daniel won this past year for a Honky Tonk Mail. So yeah, cool. pretty exciting to bring that locally. You know. So I saw something on, on your Instagram, the Carolyn Sills combo, about a Kickstarter project. What's going oh, on yeah. there? Oh, yeah. Well, that's a nice time. I mean, yeah, we're starting that this Sunday because um, we have a new record coming out this fall we're real excited about, and uh, we'll be featuring some of those songs today, actually. Cool. And so the Carolyn Sills combo Carolyn Instagram, Sills combo, you can find Instagram, more about that. Yeah, thank you. And our Facebook page as well and our website. So. Awesome. Great. Let, let's hear a couple great. songs. Sure. My uh, decided to go south, but even better then, we'll just feature Charlie Joe Wallace on this beautiful Santa Cruz 1929 single guitar <laughs> that was actually made by um, Gerard Egan, who's our guitar player uh, as well, who couldn't be here today. But cool. Right, Charlie, I'll just play along Improvise. as loud as I can. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Felina, don't go to roses tonight. I got a feeling that canteen is due for a fight. Oh, Felina, those men don't care that you're mine. They only care that you're dancing one dime at a time Oh, Felina, I know 
hope we agree that El Paso's our home But there's nights that I feel like I'm drinking alone And I see how they all turn this when you were on by Every glance of this and in your way Oh, Belinda We ain't given a chance They'll advance till you own them and pay Like wolves they pray How many times must you see That foul cantina keep making a fool out of me Oh, Felina Last night I walked into spy You dancing too close to a cowboy with stars in his eyes For your ways, just like all the rest And my hand in a rage Put a knife to his chest And if you hadn't pulled me away I'd have taken his life Oh, Belinda Don't go to roses tonight Oh, Belinda Why must you romance every glass Send me away. Oh, Felina, we ain't given a chance. They'll advance to you, hold them at bay. Like wolves, they pray. Oh, Felina, why can't you just stay away? Awesome. Woo! Thank you. You're listening to KSQD, Santa Cruz 90.7 FM. Look at that. Look at this, look at our station. Look at the, the music we get to hear. So is that that's on the new album? It's coming out, yeah, this October. So this October. Get ready, yeah. So how are people going to find out about this album? Like, Where do they go to find out information about you? Uh, for us, uh, you can go to our website, which is carolynsills.com, okay. or to our Instagram or Facebook pages. And um, yeah, we're pretty excited about it. It features a lot of Santa Cruz guitars playing on that record. So, where did you record it? Uh, this one we recorded down in Joshua Tree. Are you uh, serious? Yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness! Yeah, my, fa- my, my second favorite place in the world. Really? <laughs> oh, okay. I love Joshua. I grew up there. What? What's your favorite? Santa Cruz. Come on, David. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I couldn't say otherwise. <laughs> okay. Yeah, maybe you got Eagle Rock. I don't know this where I was from, but it's not as exciting. Um, okay, so. For time-wise, I think we need to hear another song. Another song? All right. Yeah, so yeah. tell us about this one. All right, well, let's do one more for the from the new record. Okay, cool. Um, also featuring the Santa Cruz 1929 single guitar. 
Yeah, Sandy, I know it's just not working. Yeah, my bass is, is trying hard. <laughs> uh, but this one's called I'm Not Crying. I've just rubbed jalapenos in my eyes. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not crying It's not much about you To want a gesture like that no, no. We can do one more song You can see from my worn out beliefs I was already paid But you chose this cantina To publicly say your goodbyes I'm not Crying, I've just rubbed jalapenos in my eyes. I'm not crying, you're not the lone rider to pull on the reins of my heart. This cantina is crawling with men who are up for the But you leaving without me is quite an unpleasant surprise I'm not crying I've just rubbed jalapenos in my eyes So why don't you linger and share a few drinks for old time I can't help it for no by some other lover of mine He won't be kind I'm not crying Though it's been a few months since you vowed to come take me away And fearing you might not return My heart may have strayed I still plan on absconding with you and becoming your bride. I'm not crying, I've just thrown jalapenos in my eyes. So why don't you linger and share a few drinks for old time? I can't help if we're no by some other lover of mine He won't be kind I'm not crying I'm fond of El Paso And here's where I'm going to stay The lights are much brighter out here Than in old Santa Fe Though I dreamt of returning with you to those thunderous skies I'm not crying I've just rubbed jalapenos in my eyes You're listening wow. to KSQD, Santa Cruz 90.7. Woo! I oh feel my. like I rub jalapeno in my eyes. That voice is just <laughs> bringing crazy. a tear to my eyes. Holy <laughs> moly. I just want to say Charlie, everybody should you. be very thankful because I had this urge that I kept wanting to sing along. I know. Yeah. And, and that would have not have been good. <laughs> You're welcome. Anytime. Oh, that's, so that, that's coming on the new album. And like most people have not heard that before then this is like a, an exclusive this is almost pretty, pretty intense right now and this wow. is cool <laughs> now i'm shaking <laughs> <laughs> that, that is super cool okay well thank you so much um and david do you have anything else you want to ask just thank you the talent in this town and you're at the top of the chart yeah. here it's amazing thank it, you for coming in thanks yeah thank Both you very you. much yeah. Okay, well, we're moving right along i think it's time to get our our next um interviews in but before that i mean just just think about it. Think about listening to what we were listening to right then. It's amazing what KSQD, like the, the talent that we get through this radio station and the shows that we get to listen to. Uh, I want to talk about another show. This is actually Good News Santa Cruz that is every Thursday and it airs, 
What time is there? 3.30. Um, this week on Good News Santa Cruz, join Christine Barrington for an interview with activist Willow Katz. Together they discuss the realities of um, solitary confinement in America's prison system. Learn how some of those behind bars managed to overcome incredible hardships to find healing while trying to change the system from the inside. That's Voices from um, Solitary Confinement on Good News Santa Cruz, Thursday at 3.30 on 90.7 K-Squid. Many voices, one station. So look forward to that Thursday at 3.30. Okay, David, but I, I wish we had... Oh, actually, oh, David's here. Good. I, I, I move seats. Don't. I was looking one way. Um, David, don't you wish we had like another few more minutes with her? I heard like two more songs. Well, I'm telling you, I'm supporting the Kickstarter project to get that album as soon as possible. That was so incredible. Did you say she said that it's on now? Uh, Carolyn, is it starting, on now? Star, Sunday. Starting Sunday. Sunday. Oh. Carolyn Sills combo. Okay. Support the Kickstarter. So we'll we'll tweet it, Instagram stories, feed it. Facebook, whatever. We'll, we'll get it out there. Awesome. Okay, cool. Okay, so who's next, David? Jessica Kendall Barr. So who hey, is Jessica yeah. Kendall Barr? <laughs> Jessie's one of our favorites also. She's, I'll let you tell it. Like, I always call her a polymath, which is somebody who's polymath. expert in like 48 different things. Okay. So when I'm commenting about her on, on posting about her and some uh -huh. of our collaboration, I feel like I have to list this, this huge resume because she's so amazing. But what, what are you up to? Um, so I'm in my third year of a PhD program at UC Santa Cruz. Um, cool. I study the brains of marine mammals and uh, their sleep patterns. So I'm developing a tag oh um, that's going to go out to measure for the first time um, the brain waves of marine mammals in the wild. What's kind of the craziest thing that you've learned in your research? So I think that the way marine mammals sleep is fascinating. They only sleep with half their brain. Um, so dolphins sleep like that, um, but seals uh, specifically, uh, fur seals and sea lions can actually sleep like humans when they're on land, but switch to sleeping like dolphins when they're in the water. Um, and I think that ability is really fascinating. Um, even just learning about their sleep can tell us a lot about sleep in humans and the function of things like REM sleep, um, where, where we dream. Wild. I mean, I only use half of my brain in daily life. So <laughs> that's amazing. That, what else? What else do you have going on? You're a phenomenal artist, photographer, illustrator of a new book. Tell us about that. Yeah. So I just finished um, my second uh, children's book that I illustrated. It's called Looking for Marla, and it's the story of a clownfish that transitions from male to female. Uh, and it tells this untold story from Finding Nemo um, that they skip over. And what, what is that story? What, yeah, I want to hear what, what, that, what is that over? story. <laughs> so when the matriarch of a clownfish clan dies or goes away, then um, the dominant male will transition into female. So in Finding Nemo, the dad should have become a female. Exactly. The wild. Marlin should have turned into Marla. So that's so, your book. Yeah. So we tell the story of Marla um, exploring the joys of motherhood um, and really parenthood and figure out what that means for each of the different animals in the sea, which, as you probably know, a lot of the animals in the sea approach parenthood in widely different ways. Um, so Marla explores a bunch of these different uh, examples of parenthood to try to really understand the fundamental principles of parenthood. And you have it in English and in Spanish, correct? Yeah, it's being translated into Spanish um, as we speak. Uh, and then our launch party will have both, um, both versions, bilingual versions, and that's uh, November 15th on Friday at the Santa Cruz Museum of Art and History. And then really the excited. The fundraising you did was through Kickstarter. I know you're Ventana's featured author right now, or your, yep. your trio of folks that worked on it. And you were at a very successful Kickstarter campaign, right? Yeah, so myself, um, Paloma Medina and Audrey Ford, who are the authors, uh, we launched this Kickstarter and we raised over $4,000, $4,500 uh, to print the book and then have it translated into Spanish and throw this launch party. So we're really excited for that. And where can people find more information about the book? Uh, so the book, uh, we have an Instagram uh, that's at Where's Marla. And we also have a Facebook, uh, Looking for Marla book. And um, it's on featured on my website, which is jessiekb.com. And you can find out more information there. We're selling them at the launch party. 
um, and on various avenues online on Instagram as well. Oh no! Oh, sorry. What happens this launch party? Is it like where they can get the book? Is there? Are you going to talk? What's, yeah. Yeah. So there's going to be a reading by a drag queen performer, um, because part of this. Uh, this project is really talking about um, the queerness in nature and the diversity in nature. Um, so we're working with the Diversity Center of Santa Cruz, um, the North Center for Natural History, and really trying to bring in science, art, and culture um, to connect not only science with artists, but also um, the bilingual communities in Santa Cruz County. And then you do py pyrography. How do you pronounce yes. that? <laughs> pyrography. Yeah, yes. pyrography. So it's wood burning, basically, right? Yep. Yeah, you've d we've done some collaborations with you on a couple of surfboards. We have a secret one coming out soon. Mm -hmm. Wait, so uh, what is it? It's Tell like, us more about that. Yeah, I want to know what that is. So you basically plug a piece of metal into the wall, and it becomes very hot. <laughs> and I can attest to that. <laughs> uh, and you carefully run that over uh, the the wood uh, to burn it in specific pattern if you're good oh my goodness, i want to see the video of <laughs> it's this it's unbelievable on it's our instagram bentana surfboards i feel like there, i've seen there are yeah. hyperlapse videos and stills okay. of her work and then oh. uh jesse kb art is yep. your instagram and, mm -hmm. and there's some unbelievable work there as well she's really talented Awesome. It's like cool. a $30 piece of metal, basically, and she's creating these <laughs> really expensive art pieces that are gorgeous. <laughs> that yeah. is so cool. And if you are interested in learning about this uh, technique, it's actually, again, like David said, it's super accessible. It's only $20 to buy a tool, um, but I'm also teaching a workshop on September 8th at the Hold Fast Studio School, which is another of Ventana's many collaborators. <laughs> yeah. Great. Okay. Well, uh, I, I, I love to have you on. I wish again. I wish we had like more time because there seems like there's so many veins. I mean, just Let's do Marlin and two. Marla. Yeah. I, I feel like we need to talk about this more. But thank you so much. And um, let's have our next next guest uh, next and final. I think. Yeah. Is Bev here? Yeah. I think. I wonder if she can hear us. I think she's Bev might be eating salt. So <laughs> our show basically ends at 55. So we have five Perfect. minutes. Perfect. But we did it, Dave. We did it. We, we, got, it, we got it right. We, we, our, our goal for the for this show was be able to actually talk to Beverly. That's right. So, and, yeah. and not have us talk too much. So exactly. I'm, I'm just going to sit here and eat so pitted <laughs> Ventana salt saloon cherry flavored salt while we talk, which is oh unbelievable. Wait, hold on. Let me try it. Here, have some. I want to try with Pass this. it around the studio. Okay. Whoa. Fantastic. Mm, that's really good. It is good. Wait, so you make Smell this? It too. Yeah. Tell us more about this. Yeah. Great. Hi, I'm Beverly with oh. Salt Saloon. <laughs> uh, the salt that you guys are tasting right now, we smoked with a cherry wood. We wanted to bring in something that had to do with Ventana surfboards and use wood in the process of making a blend. So it has Pacific sea salt and also Lava Love sea salt, which is uh, with charcoal infused um, coconut shells. Oh. So, yeah, so it brings in that smoke and wood. And it just smells and tastes great, and you can <sighs> sprinkle it on just about anything. Where do pe where can people find all these salts? Uh, at, on Ventana Surfboards website. That's true. What do you have a website as well? I right? have Instagram at Salt Saloon, S A L T S A L O O N, and we'll be at Capitol Art and Wine. And this Friday, I'm going to be with the Sup Shack, the yeah. Stand Up Paddle Horse Shack at Event Santa Cruz. So I that's going to be that. a lot of fun. You should go to that. <laughs> <laughs> and where is that? When is that? That is Friday so night <laughs> uh, at the new Pono in Capitola. Yeah, right, oh, at, like, right. On, on the other side of like Target. Yeah, they have like a new like store. It's cool. There's gonna be like 1,500 people. It's gonna be huge. Yeah. Yeah, I also have a chef um, garden feast Capitola. I'm gonna say that backwards. Uh, and we're doing a brunch where we're going to feature the salts on each uh, um, each course. It's going to be really fun. Yeah, the series we you did for us, mm -hmm. three different salts. It's just people loving it. It's great. We've been shipping it all over the U.S. What, but this isn't your only gig, right? You do no. you do other things here. I am a graphic designer and marketer, and have had marketing positions throughout of different brands from Apple to my own uh, contracts. So. That's my day job, you know, I was doing marketing, which is how I created this, is that I love the ocean so much and I wanted to create something through all this echo anxiety that we have right now going on, you know, how can I give back? How can I do something for the ocean? So I created uh, the brand to not only take the sea salts from the ocean, but to give back to Surfrider and Oceana. So it feels really good. It was this, a positive way for me to sort of handle the, uh, with what's going on in the world right now and yeah. so that we can do something and have fun with it and have great flavor and do something good. Eat salt, help the ocean. Yes. 
So, uh, and, and then you're, you're the graphic designer of, of the labels and you come up with some of these really creative names, right? Yes, I do all of that. Uh, one of the, the uh, one, my favorite story, I think, is the lemon one. Tell us about yeah, that. Yeah, so stolen lemon. Uh, the, we had a tree. I was living uh, in Silicon Valley and we had a tree on our patio in a, like, one of those large terracotta pots. And one day it was just gone. Someone actually stole it off our front porch. And so to pay homage to this beautiful lemon tree, it was one of those really beautiful, almost looked like it should be in a French garden, you know. Uh, it's, it was gone, and so I paid homage and called it that. But what I'm finding is even more uh, fun with the whole stolen lemon is that almost every one of us has stolen a lemon. Like, there's someone who's had a tree that's gone over your fence. Um, that's, you know, you've, you've grabbed one and you want it, you needed it, you know, and you used it in one of your meals. So I think a lot of people relate to it. That's a great story. Yeah, that's cool. So what else? What else is going on? Is there anything else you want to talk about? In 30 seconds. Yeah, we, we, we nailed <laughs> this, it. I well, you know, I really am so honored to be part of this group. Listening to all the other interviews, they're amazing. And uh, Ventana uh, collaboration has been just so much fun. So there's new salts that will be coming out at Capitola Art and Wine. You'll see some new flavors. Uh, we were doing drink salts hopefully really soon, hence the name Salt Saloon. So just keep uh, checking out the Instagram and uh, our website and see what events and where there's some markets that uh, carry it. Black Point Market, Sub Shack, uh, the surf, uh, Midtown Surf Shop. Uh, so you can find the salts at uh, lots of local markets and that's growing. Awesome. Thank awesome. you so much, Thanks Beverly Connolly. Thank you. Okay, David, I'm going to wrap it up. I mean, we're already over time, but i got to ask you a question. Sure. Okay, so what? this is such a corny question, but like, Really, what motivates you to do, do what you do? Because you you have a job at Microsoft. I do. You have a good job. paying job, day job here. Right. There's only so much of a person you could like output to the world because I mean that's probably pretty involving your job. How do you like? What's this purpose driven thing that like makes you do Ventana? I, you know, I'm just really outgoing. I love connecting people. I want to help Santa Cruz grow and yeah. get all these small businesses to work together because we're bigger together and we can we can kind of compete with the bigger players out there if we all work together. And I just love meeting new people and getting inspired by them. It is cool. We so, have good jobs now. We do. <laughs> and you're you're the genius at it. I mean, I, I look at you and I wish I could do half of what you do, but uh, thank you for having me on today. We're at Ventana Surfboards on Instagram, Ventana Surfboards and Supplies on Facebook, and VentanaSurfboards.com. And we look forward to collaborating with others in the community. Awesome. Okay, so if you want to hear this interview and the performance over again, go to EventSantaCruz.com. Tomorrow we should have the video up, if not early next week. But um, thank you, David, for being on the show. Thanks, Matt. Okay, now let's play. Not necessarily. Uh, <laughs>